viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. ISIS foretold in Afghanistan a danger to regional peace and security. Indian security forces thought major terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir. And Pakistan, a victim of its own creation, the TDP menace. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan where there has been concerning developments surrounding the expansion of ISIS, even when the Taliban vehemently denies its presence in the war zone nation. Despite territorial losses in Iraq and Syria, the extremist group appears to have found fertile ground in Afghanistan, exploiting the instability and chaos after the withdrawal of US troops. The country has witnessed a series of deadly attacks claimed by Islamic State targeting civilians, government officials and religious sites. Join us as we unravel the complexities of this situation and explore the potential implications for regional peace and security. 26th August 2021, Kabul International Airport, which was already a site of chaos and desperation following US troops withdrawal, suffered a massive terrorist attack that killed over 180 people. Another blow in Kabul in April 2022, this time in a mosque, claimed over 70 innocent lives. September 2022 witnessed an uncommon attack. The Russian embassy in the capital Kabul was targeted. Seven people died, adding to the horrific tally, three more died in an orchestrated attack in a hotel in December. The targets, the nature of attack and the message was different in all attacks. However, there was one common thread that linked them all. ISIS, history's dark side, was rearing its ugly head again. The violent campaign of ISIS has only intensified with time. Both civilians and Taliban officials have been targeted. Various media reports, while citing ISIS's weekly newspaper Al Naba, reported that since the Taliban's return, ISIS-K has launched 283 attacks, claiming the lives of at least 670 people and wounding 1,200 others. ISIS uh, cadres, I would say, they have been moving to different places and we don't have very definitive uh, figures. But yes, they have been in Libya, they have been in... Uh, of course, Al Hol and Roche, these area, most of their families are there. Some of them have moved to North Africa. But good number of them, they wanted to come to Afghanistan and they wanted to make Afghanistan a hub of all kinds of Islamic radical groups. So with these intentions only, they had come. ISIS's emergence as a deadly force in Afghanistan can be traced back to 2014, when the group took advantage of the chaos and instability in Iraq after the US withdrawal. Their swift rise was fueled by the radical agenda of establishing a caliphate, an Islamic state, in both Iraq and Syria. Although ISIS was eventually driven out of its strongholds in Iraq and Syria in 2017, the group proved resilient and its influence extended beyond borders, with affiliated cells operating in different parts of the world. One such cell was the Islamic State in Khorasan province, which became a significant threat to the Taliban's authority in Afghanistan. This relentless spate of violence has transformed the already complex situation in Afghanistan. Although both the groups represent Sunni Islamist extremist factions, the rivalry between these groups stems from contrasting ideologies. ISIS calls Taliban impure as they engage in political dealings with other nations including the United States. ISIS says it is against their beliefs to engage in politics. When Taliban came back to power, with the help of the Americans, of course, then we see that Taliban has a slightly different philosophy. It is looking to establish the Emirate within the Afghan borders. Has often said that it does not want Al-Qaeda or other uh, terrorist groups to operate 
from its territory against neighbors other countries and has even undertaken that at the global level. But we are looking at this continues to happen. Taliban is also helpless. There have been intra-group fightings between the ISKP and uh, Taliban Al-Qaeda and uh, Taliban Al-Qaeda. But if you come to think of it, the groups of various fighters keep on changing between one organization to another organization. So on the one hand, they weaken Taliban. On the other hand, they strengthen themselves as well as uh, they try to, uh, to, to fight uh, for space, strategic space for themselves and try to spread around. And wherever there is a little bit of a vacancy uh, or a vacation, a vacated space, uh, they try to entrench themselves there. And so therefore, they indeed are a very major threat and they need to be uh, looked at. As ISIS's case fight against the Taliban intensifies, analysts warn that the violence is likely to escalate further. This volatile situation not only possesses a grave threat to Afghanistan's stability and security, but also has far-reaching implications for the broader region. ISIS-K's expansion and attacks on neighboring countries like Pakistan and Tajikistan have already heightened tensions and raised concerns about the potential for a wider regional conflict. The international community is now faced with the urgent task of preventing ISIS-K from establishing a permanent foothold in Afghanistan and thwarting its efforts to export terror to other nations. It requires a concerted effort from all nations to unite against extremism and support Afghanistan in its journey towards peace and stability. In the face of such violence and destruction, the people of Afghanistan continue to endure untold suffering. Only through collective action and unwavering determination can the menace of ISIS-K be defeated and the seeds of the peace sown in the war-torn lands of Afghanistan. Let's shift our focus to India's Jammu and Kashmir, which has been facing challenges due to constant cross-border infiltration attempts by terrorists. Armed terrorists from Pakistan are persistently trying to enter into India to disrupt peace and tranquility. The Indian security forces are alert near the LOC to thwart the attempts by terrorists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to enter into Jammu and Kashmir. We have a report. In a major success in the fight against terrorism, the Indian security forces on July 17 neutralized four Pakistani terrorists in an encounter in the Poonj district of Jammu and Kashmir. The operation was carried out in the Sindhara area, a mountainous region near the line of control. The terrorists were heavily armed and had planned to carry out a major attack in the area. However, the security forces were able to track them down and neutralize them in a fierce gun battle. This is the first major successful operation against terrorists in the area after multiple attacks in Rajori and Poonch since January this year. On 17th July, specific intelligence regarding persons' presence of armed terrorists near villages Sindra of Surankot again of District Poonch was received. Based on this specific intelligence, an operation was launched by Indian Army along with Special Operation Group of Jammu Kashmir Police. The coordinate search of this area was carried out. After establishing an effective cordon, the troops commenced their search of village Sindra. Four terrorists who had taken shelter in the forest near the village opened indiscriminate fire. Their fire was promptly retaliated and the terrorists were pinned down in the general area. The Poonch district of Jammu and Kashmir remains more volatile due to frequent infiltration bids by the terrorists. 
the district's proximity to the line of control has made it a prime target for terrorists to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir and carry out attacks on security forces and non-Kashmiris. The Indian security forces believe that due to an anti-terrorism operations in Kashmir that has restricted space available for terrorists, they have begun expanding their footprints south of the Pir Panjal. India and Pakistan share a 740 km long de facto border known as line of control between Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan occupied parts of the princely state. The LOC was established as part of the Shimla Agreement at the end of the war between India and Pakistan in 1971. Since then, Pakistan continues to violate the ceasefire agreement and make all possible attempts to send armed terrorists and drugs into the Indian side. Rajouri and Punch Belt actually occupies 200 kilometers on the line of control. And this is one of the most sensitive areas with heavy population on either side. Population on Indian side, 75% of Muslims who have got similar ethnicity as people of POK. And Pakistan feels that they will be more sympathetic to their cause. They will give them safe hiding place and they will also give them the logistic support. Second, this is a heavily wooded area. There are thick forests which enable the Pakistanis to hide themselves easily. Then there are mountains which go from 3,000 feet to 18,000 feet. Because of this, there are lots of deep ravines, there are lots of tributaries, there are lots of riverines, lots of nalas, and Punch River itself along with its tributaries. So all these gullies, all these ravines and all these nalas lend themselves to easier infiltration and difficult patrolling on the Indian side. The Union Ministry of Home Affairs has informed the Parliament that the government has adopted a well-coordinated and multi-pronged strategy to tackle cross-border infiltration which includes tactical deployment of forces at the international border and the line of control. Latest technology like surveillance cameras, night vision cameras, heat sensing gadgets are being used by the security agencies to stop infiltration by the terrorists and stop supply of illicit drugs from across the border. The strict security measures by the agency resulted in a sharp decline in cross-border infiltration. Now let's talk about Pakistan, a country that never stops supporting terrorism despite international condemnation and warnings. Islamabad now finds itself in a pit that it had dug for others. As Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, an offshoot of the Afghan Taliban has been targeting Pakistan repeatedly, resulting in the loss of life and property. However, repeated attacks by the outfit prove that the country is incapable of dealing with the menace. We have a report. 2021 witnessed the return of the Afghan Taliban. As the Taliban's influence grew, so did the activities of Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, a terror organization based in Waziristan right at the doorstep of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and the federally administered tribal areas. The TTP repeatedly targeted Pakistan, leaving behind a trail of destruction and loss of life and property. It seemed that the country which had sheltered and supported Taliban leaders for decades was now reaping the bitter fruits of its past actions. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan, once at the helm of the nation, had celebrated the rise of Taliban in Afghanistan. He painted it as the breaking of shackles of slavery and even referred to the newly formed Taliban government as pro-Pakistan. Little did he realize the grave consequences of such statements. Recently, a video emerged on social media portraying the aftermath of the devastating twin suicide bombings in Bara, Pakistan. The hearts of the Pakistani Defense Forces was shattered as they bid farewell to the fallen victims. However, Pakistan has failed to comprehend the true intentions of the terrorist outfit it had once harbored. The TTP always held the ambition of reducing Islamabad's influence in the KPK and FATA regions and it was only a matter of time before they turned their violence inward. 
retired Major General Bishambhar Dayal shed light on the history of TTP, tracing its origins back to the Taliban, which Pakistan had played a significant role in creating, training, recruiting and funding. To understand its history, we have to understand the history of Taliban itself. It's a, a, Taliban was also formed in early 90s, you know, 92, 93, when the Islamist forces, I mean the fundamentalist forces, which are globally, which were haunting, uh, you know, globally, which were trying to establish themselves, Al-Qaeda and all these forces were coming up. And in Afghanistan, that the government, uh, the, the, the Soviet Union failed, and then the government flopped, and then the coalition flopped. So Taliban rose from there. And Taliban always had a foothold in Pakistan. Taliban was genesis of ISI. It was formed in Pakistan, generated by Pakistan, and a complete ISI in Pakistan army is responsible for creation, training, recruitment, training, funding of Taliban. So when you create a force like that for Taliban and you create it in Pakistan, there will be elements in Pakistan who would be associated with this sort of a with this sort of a movement. So whatever thereafter the elements were doing in Pakistan, it did not have the support of the financial wizards. So in that duration, the Taliban, Tariqe Taliban Pakistan started targeting Pakistanis itself. There's no doubt about it. They were involved in number of, from the from 2008-9, they were involved in number of cases, particularly in the Fata area, not in the northern areas, particularly along the border. Along the along uh, along the border of Luchistan and in this area for number of incidents creating right up to Islamabad. TTP's brutality knew no bounds. In 2014, they carried out the horrific Peshawar Army school attack, where 150 people, including 134 innocent students, lost their lives. The recent spike in TTP attacks had laid bare Pakistan's helplessness in tackling the menace they once supported. The regime in Islamabad, which had once sheltered and financed the TTP, now seemed to have limited options, resorting to blaming the Afghan Taliban for providing safe havens to the terrorists. The situation demanded a firm hand and serious attention from both the regime and the defense forces if Pakistan desired to alter the current course of events. Reports showed that 665 attacks had been reported in KP since June 2022, reflecting the urgency for a structural change to prevent further loss of lives. Hence, Pakistan must commit to a structural change and betterment if it now wishes not to lose any more of its personnel and civilians. Retired IF Wing Commander Praful Bakshi offered insights into TTP's deep-rooted presence within Pakistan's socio-economic structure. He said the Taliban had infiltrated the army, police, security forces, intelligence agencies and youth programs, even influencing politicians. TTP is not a force which is standing in a garrison. It is in, in the socio-economic structure of the country. It is part of the uh, 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 social group of the country. It is, and their elements have crept in army. They are in police forces. They are in security forces. They are in intelligence and the youth program. They are there. So they're, they're, uh, but the uh, politicians are affected by them. So they are, uh, in, they are everywhere. It is not very easy to just, uh, until and unless you get them out, or could put them under control, you cannot meet, get the requirement. They, they are supporting each other. Now, if they find that police is not behaving, their support system is in police. That is how they find, that they, that's how they um, 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 create an explosion. Then they have got their uh, elements which are ready to uh, commit suicide. The kamikaze element are there. They, they'll be utilized every whether it is an army public school, whether in the police gathering, as you see, Peshawar, it happened, Karachi, it happened, Rawalpindi, it happened. So, so many places, it will keep happening. As Pakistan now grapples with financial deficits, political turmoil 
and the repercussions of supporting terrorism, it becomes apparent that a drastic change is required. PM Shahbaz Sharif's commitment to anti-terrorism voiced during the virtual SCO summit of 2023 must now transform into concrete action. The path ahead is arduous, but Pakistan has no choice but to confront its past mistakes and rectify its course if it wishes to break free from the shackles of terrorism and forge a brighter, peaceful future for its people. Moving on, Pakistan-backed terrorist organizations are continuing their efforts to disturb peace and tranquility in Jammu and Kashmir, be it sponsoring narco-terrorism or the supply of illegal arms and ammunition. Various terrorist organizations which are active in Jammu and Kashmir are now misleading the local youth to join their outfit. We have this report. Strict security measures at the line of control has perturbed Pakistan-based terrorist groups as they are not able to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir. Now, they are making efforts to trap the local Kashmiri youth and recruit them as their cadres. The police in Kulgam district of Jammu and Kashmir busted a terror recruitment module with the arrest of Rubani Bashir, Akka Dr. Sabeel, a PhD scholar from the Central University of Kashmir. He has been accused of identifying, funding and motivating local youth for terror-related activities. According to the local police, Sabeel was associated with banned terror outfits like Hezbollah Mujahideen and jamaat e islami Interrogation reveals that Sabeel had recruited Fazil Ahmed Pare and Tariq Ahmed Naiku for the outfit. Police also recovered arms and ammunition from his possession. Kulgam police ne ek terror recruitment module bust kiya hai. Kulgam police ne ek input generate kiya tha kuch mahino pehle ki Dr. Sabil code name se ek aadmi hai jo ki ek band outfit his jamaat islami wing ko belong karta hai and he is actively engaged in identified jo youth hai yahan pe unko hostile karta hai against state and unko active karta hai to join terror ranks. I want to tell you in the past few days, we knew that the car number of this Dr. Sabeel code, we knew that the car number of this car is number of this car. We have identified a person who has identified the car and apprehended it on the spot. When we identified it, we knew that the car number of this car was Dr. Rubani Mashir. Dr. Rubani Mashir belongs to Dr. Rubani Mashir. इन्होंने पीएचडी की है फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कश्मीर एंड ही हैज बीन एक्टिव मेंबर ऑफ बैंड आउटफिट जमाते इस्लामी विंग ये आईजेटी जो कि इनका स्टूडेंट विंग है इस्लाम इस्लामिक जमातुल तुबा का 14 साल तक ये उसके मेंबर भी रहे After the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A from Jammu and Kashmir the security forces have tightened their grip over the unlawful activities especially those responsible for disrupting peace and brotherhood in the Union Territory. There has been an overall development in Jammu and Kashmir, especially in building infrastructure, tourism, opening of new businesses and job opportunities for the Kashmiri youth. This is not suitable to Pakistan's agenda and she is trying to activate its terror module by misleading the youth to join terror outfits. Pakistan is making all-out attempt to speed up terrorism in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The reasons are very, very obvious. If you look at the state of terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, it is seen that there is absolutely no terror activities taking place in Ladakh or up north. The terrorists today are scared of attacking the security forces and the terror attacks are actually restricted to only attacking the soft targets. So therefore, terrorism as such is not looking up at all. And this is after great attempt by Pakistan to increase it. So uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, Kashmir is an obsession for them. They are not bothered about their economic problem. They are not bothered about their political problems, but they feel that uh, Kashmir, they must speak about. And one would remember 
that some time back when there was the economic meet of G20 countries, the Pakistani foreign minister who came there to speak in the economic meet, instead of talking about economic affairs, spoke about Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir is heading towards rapid development and the people are reaping the peace dividends due to policies of the centre. The people of Jammu and Kashmir have realised about the loss they have suffered in the past seven decades due to terrorism and violence. Pakistan's propaganda on Jammu and Kashmir at the international level has also been exposed as the areas of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir in its forceful occupation are suffering rampant poverty, corruption, high inflation and unemployment. The promoters of terrorism are suffering due to their own karma. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.